and then go farther down. Go all the way down? Yep. Looks like it binds right in the center there in that plastic thing. Well, welcome back, guys. We're also going to do a little maintenance here. Dawson's tripping over a box I got in the garage here, but we've got this Husqvarna that we recently bought, and we did have a little problem with it. I went ahead and took the bagger system off. I took the battery out. It's just like the Craftsman. This has the pedal forward and back. Works really good, except Dawson noticed that it, what's the word? It it binds? Yeah, it's almost like when you just get ready to press it, it, it sticks. It sticks. The reverse... You know, you press it down, sticks. it goes. You press it back, it goes. But you just start to go one direction or the other, and it sticks. And so, I wanted to look down in here at the transmission, and I'll show you that in just a moment. But Dawson, what we decided to do is Dawson's going to pop the, the hubcap off. Maybe you wait just a second on that. Um... And show them what, what's going on here with this. What we think it is. This has got that GT transmission. And if you look really close right there, the beginning of the movement. I don't know if I get the light just right. There's a little shiny spot like something's rubbing. And so we're wondering, yeah, we're wondering if there's a little bit of debris there. He's just hardly pressing it. Just take, do that play in it, the back and forth play. It's just about when you just start to move it. So what I think we're going to do, because we can't reach anything, and this doesn't look that difficult. We put a 20-ton jack under there, so I don't know if that's heavy enough. You think that's heavy enough? Yeah. You think this weighs 40,000? Mm -hmm. I can probably stand up and lift this tractor up. But it's handy. It's a perfect height. We take out these two bolts on the sides. And it looks like there's another bracket on the left over here. Probably, yeah, and there's one on the right. And that holds the front of the transmission up. Hold that light up here if you would. There. And um, the belts, they look brand new on this. I don't see anything wrong with the belts. Um, the second problem we had is I went and mowed up a steep hill, and it wouldn't move forward. So I let up, and I backed up, and then I went forward, it went forward. And I'm like, hmm, I wonder if the belt's slipping. So... We might, if yeah. we do the front, if you watch it, and you do the throttle pedal here. Yeah, the, right, right in there. Not, I don't think it's the full range of motion. See how it moves right. only a little bit. Now, if I put it in reverse, watch how far that moves. Yeah, it's all. So we think that there's probably grass or some. Yeah, hold that light here. But that little finger right there, when you just touch it, do it again. That thing goes forward. It hits that right there. See that? And so we think it's got a bunch of junk under that cover. And I can't get to that very easily in the machine. So why don't we pull this whole transmission right out of here. We can take the top covers off. And we can vacuum off the grass, clean it up, and get a good look at what's going on here. And that'll give us a good understanding of what this transmission is. And it really shouldn't take that long. And hopefully no money on it. Dawson's going to use a little heat gun. You know how he gets these hubcaps off. Warms them up a little bit and then pulls that right off. Nice. We're going to get a little parts bucket and get all of our parts so we don't lose anything. He's going to do both sides. Might as well do that now. We'll pull the clips, pull the wheels, jack it up. Then it'll give us good access to the bolts. He's going to pump the jack up there and then uh, we probably just leave the jack in there because it's probably plenty safe enough. And then... Uh, we got them little E-clips. He's going to use a flat blade screwdriver and pop both wheels off. And these are not directional tires, so it doesn't matter which side. They got a lug that goes both ways, so. Yeah, just use a short handle and it'll go right up quick. We're in the garage this time, but we got too many projects going on in here. I'm getting ready for a bathroom remodel, and I've got all my boxes of Plumbing parts, electrical, uh, my paint supplies, everything's in here till I load the trailer up. And that's probably enough, right, to get your wheels off. And then he's going to do the little E clips and set them right in our parts bucket. We'll see how that goes. 
They're coming off good. Yep. Try not to scratch your rims up. Don't be in a hurry. And see, by having a jack in the center like that, it can't tip to the side. Just slide that out of the way. And then we got a washer on there. And does that... And the key, yeah. And does that sleeve come off too? No, that's part of the axle. Okay, good. We'll go around the other side, do the same thing. While he's doing the other side there, I popped the belt off the pulley. You just lift up on it with a breakdown. And I think this, uh, you know, what do you call that thing? The freewheel will slide right through the end so we don't have to disconnect that. He's got his key and his washer and his second wheel. We can get them right out of here. And remember, we had that one rim that was all grease. We'll go ahead and clean them up while it's off. All right. On this lever, that's your foot control lever, I pulled that little clip off. And this rod should lift right up. You know, like that. So that's disconnected. Our belt's disconnected. Dawson's got his sockets and his wrenches ready. He's going to remove... Let's see here. He's going to remove the uh, bolts. Get you in position here. There's two bolts here, two bolts there, and then there's one bolt on the front edge to hold the weight up. And then I lowered the jack down, so now the bottom of the transmission is resting on the 6x6. Six six. And of course, the jack's right there too, so we're in good shape. So Dawson's got the ratchet and a ratcheting wrench. Go ahead and unhook your your front part. I like when Dawson helps me on projects. He's holding that front one. Probably loosen it with a wrench first. Yeah. Don't just always use a ratchet for it, you know. There you go. Well, you got to loosen it a little bit. There, okay, that might do it now. Because those ratchets are only, I don't know, 40, 50 pounds or something. Back your head up, would you? Yeah, go like that. Awesome. These transmissions are only filled with grease. Go ahead and put your nut right on it so we can't mix up stuff. And then he's going to pull this side. Just break them loose with your wrench first, you know. See, uh, having Daw you're going the wrong way. Having Dawson help me is a good thing. Not because I'm lazy, because I don't think I am. I want to teach him the basics on stuff. So if he gets a rider for his lawn mowing business and he has some kind of issue like this, and he's got a Sunday you or Saturday. You saw any new tools? Your new ratchet? Wrench? Yeah, I did. I like these new flexes. Gear wrench. Um, did you lose some both of them? Yep. Good man. Mm -hmm. But they should say on and off on them, so you can just look at them, right? But because he'd have have a little experience, he could might be able to fix his own stuff on a on an afternoon, you know. Be kind of cool if he could fix his own. He doesn't have to pay the. The cost isn't normally too bad to pay somebody to fix this stuff, but when you take this into the shop during mowing season, what's what's the problem, Dawson? Uh, they're, they're busy. Yeah. They're busy, and so the thing will sit there a month, and you, you're not going to get mowed, so people run out and buy a new machine. Now, wiggle this up and down just a little. Up and down. See how everything's loose there, so I think we're good. Do the same thing on this side. Look at the bottom, see if it ain't turning. Yeah, it is. Put your ratchet on there and just hold it. Don't turn it on. There you go. Go for it. No, you should be all set. Does it lock on? That's, I don't know, that's cool. It's got a lockout feature. But this tractor's new to us too, so we're uh, learning as we go here. We just 
I don't want to send it out and have somebody monkey with it and charge me for a whole new transmission when there's nothing really wrong with it. I don't know. Let's find out together. Now, the last one, wait a minute, the last one might let the transmission drop. So get ready for movement, you know. So stop at the end, man. Don't take it all the way off. No more. And now, wiggle that tranny up and down. See if it's loose. Grab the front end. Does the front tilt down? The front up there. Does it tilt down? The transmission. No. no. It should. Um, let me, oh, duh. Let me jack this up a little bit. All right. All right, now tilt it down. Does the front go down on its own? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, we're in good shape. I was trying to be safe, guys, and it's a jacket and a block. We're holding it. So let me let this down again because where's the handle at? I lost my handle. Where's the little? Oh, right here. Let this down like that so the transmission doesn't smash down. I'd like to get the whole thing right out here and look at it, you know. And he's putting all his bolts together. We got a nice parts bucket. We can't lose it. We'll leave it right on the machine because we got three, three things going right now. And Dawson just ordered parts for his uh, weed whacker. Oh yeah, he's got a weed whacker video coming up on a really good buy, isn't it? Yeah. But uh, now what we do, Dawson, is I'll look up inside here if you jack this up. And then I want to make sure nothing's tugging and pulling. We do have a spring up there. And this thing is what we got to worry about. Let's push this forward. And see if we can get this to come down slowly. Now I want to disconnect the spring or disconnect the clips holding the spring. And then we have a wire connector there. That's probably a safety switch. All right, that's probably good. We're all free, right? So now I'm going to go under there and I'll look at the ends of the spring and see if we can disconnect that. So the spring's on here and it has a washer and a cotter key. So I drop that down and then I push this up and out. So there's our spring. Now, the only thing we got left is, by the looks, is this electrical connector. And that wire should be long enough that I think we can lower it down, which is actually raise the tractor up and then get in there so I can release it properly because I don't want to, I can't see it well enough to know how to disconnect it yet. This is jacking up the jack here and that's going to lower the transmission. Go fast. Not go very fast. 20 ton jack only goes slow. All right, now push this little lever through. Keep, keep the handle in there, that's what you're doing. Push it on through so that we don't hurt it. Okay, stop. We're losing our transmission already, guys. We're gonna get it more even on the block. So we got it more even here. And I'm being real cautious because I don't want to crack plastic, you know. My craftsman over there has got a aluminum hydrostat. So it looks like, okay, hold on. Reach under there and grab your nut. There was locking clips, but it looks like it's just. Where are we here? There we are. Just a safety switch. All right, so now it looks like we can bring this transmission right down out. So Doss is going to keep jacking it up, and we're going to look this over. Maybe it would, it would be nice if it's just debris under there. All right, push your little release lever here. It's kind of getting. Back there, it's getting a little stuck. Make sure it goes through without binding. Is it through? Yeah. Okay. And then we're going to jack this up off, and we're going to pull this out. I don't think the transmission weighs very much anyway. All right, so Dawson lifted that lever up. I disconnected the wire. We're looking down in here. Nothing's in the way. He's got the push, release the freewheel in. Now, what we did is we took this bracket and moved it up here. So we got full clearance. He's going to pull this out. And be careful with everything. And how much does it weigh? Um, 
like 20 pounds. Don't turn it. Just bring it straight out. 20 pounds. Yeah, it's light. And then we're out, guys. So it's really pretty quick, isn't it, Dawson? Yep. Once we figure it out. Look at the solenoids right here in the back. That's an odd spot. Um, so we're going to take this outside where we can see a little better. All right. Dawson's playing around, turning things, looking at things. A lot of times you can see something wrong with an item, you know. But... What you're supposed to look for on this is anything broken. There it is plastic. But everything seems to function good and it makes no noise, does it, Dawson? These things are noted to break, I think, on the bottom. And nothing broke there. And then this belt, what happens, Dawson, is this. Look at, when you move that lever, it moves this part up. See that? And it pinches a belt, and the belt will move out here, and that changes your speed. And these ears back here, these look okay. There is some grass in there. They're probably, they should have put a shield over the thing and not had all these individual little covers. Wouldn't it, wouldn't it make sense, Dawson, if they made a rectangle cover that went up and over this? And then just left the front edge open for the, the main belt? What's this thing? Oh, that's your, this is your rod that moves it forward. And you get the camera up here. See if you can move that at all. And I'll show you what we saw. I don't know if you could, right here. Can that move forward and back or not by hand? No. All right, let's show them what we oh. found. Let's see. Is that little opening right here catches right Dawson right there that part right so I think what we're gonna do yeah it's back but it won't move forward it won't move forward easily right all right but it seems like it catches right there so yep. I'm gonna open her up so you don't think something's broken right there do you like this cover is supposed to go all the way across there? I don't know. It seems like a lot of stuff is wide open here. And then the spring is right there. See the spring's got a shiny spot, that's what we saw. Um, and then when that moves, there's this adjustment knot. So, let's look this over. What we got is let me take a picture don't scratch this up. There's our part number. I definitely want that. And then um, this cover goes under that cover. And that cover goes over is this over cover. this cover. And this is part of the front cover. So that's a foolish way to build something. I would have made it so this thing has another screw here. And you can lift this up. And this is under that one. And... Um, how many more? One, two, three, three, four, four. And this whole thing would come up, but we can't come up, Dawson, because the pulley's in the, way. in the way. So don't take that off yet. I wanted to look this belt over. See, that thing looks like brand new. The other belt looked brand new. And it's got to, it can't be tight because otherwise when it's running, the thing will be moving. You can't, got to have this free wheeling. So, I'm wondering if debris is down under here, allowing that thing or not allowing it to move forward. That one off at least. Well, what I wanted to say first was, you see the paint? Green. See how the paint lines up to the paint? I don't think this has ever been open, guys. See this? Yeah. Lines right up with that. So, that's good. That means that the previous owner probably didn't work on it. Same thing over here is that paint mark goes straight right that way. And then I don't think anything's been apart, which I like. But we think something's binding right there. So we're going to probably end up taking this apart, which I know there's a pin across here that we not, might need a special tool. We can probably make something. And then um, I know there's an adjustment right here. And I believe it's got to be like two and an eighth inches long front to back. And then <clears throat> some of the models had a speed control screw on it. 
And I don't know if this one does. I don't see anything. It moves right along though, don't it? Goes like, I don't know, faster than the craftsman does. Yeah. Moves right along. So uh Dawson was gonna take this into the tractor day. And uh he thought going down the road with this would be pretty fast, but we didn't do it. Um he took his four wheeler. And then see this adjustment screw has blue on the top and then blue over there. I don't think anything's ever been adjusted. See, this is all one cover, but you see how this goes together right here? Looks like one whole piece. Well, what I'm thinking, guys, is this was over there, and this belt came over and slapped on it and rubbed it so much that it, look at that, it cut into that one a solid eighth of an inch. It went right through here, so I wonder if that's happening to everyone's. Is that telling me that this belt is too loose? I think these are like 50 some dollar belts. I don't want to buy it if there's nothing really wrong with it. Um, to me, they should have had a guide here, like a metal guide, to hold it from doing any damage to the plastics. But we're going to try to take this cover loose and see what happens. To get this cover up, we have to take this apart. Yeah, they're not very tight, like almost nothing. And I don't remember if there's like check balls under here. I think there might be eight check balls somewhere in this thing. I think they're under that, right? I don't remember. It's a lot like a recoil. And this thing should come straight up. All right. No, we press down, slide the pin. So Dawson can help me press that down. All right, we gotta have the belt off first so it can compress. So we gotta figure out how to get the belt off from here. Well, it looks like we gotta have this cage, which is to the front. Leave her right here, hang on to her. I'd put your screw right back in. This one too. Because we're not checking lengths. If I don't want to mix anything up here. And then, uh, I might have unhooked the wrong thing, didn't I? I think these have to go. Mm -hmm. I can't believe this is all plastic. I would start them right back in there too. That side, would you? And then they are different, so I want to put them right back in. And then does this come up? It don't, right? Yeah, it does. Yeah, but not exactly. See what's going on? The whole unit's coming up with it. Are we supposed to take this off first or take it out as a unit? Probably as a unit, right? Yeah. Well, you hang on to these, because I don't want them lost. Put them right back into there. No. So we don't lose them. All right, yeah. We won't lose them, but we uh, want to know what location they're in. Those are the largest ones. And then Yeah, we'll have to let the squirrel in, Dawson. He's out here helping us, huh? Hi squirrel. You wanna play out here. He got one of those little uh not a mouse, but what are them other little things with a log nose? A shrew this morning. And he's over here playing with him. I'm like, let him go. So, I just want to pay attention to how this comes out. Is this slides in there. Right? Is it happening? How about if we just work the belt up over it, right? That's what, what we're trying to do at the moment. We'll leave this aside. And then... He presses this down and we slide this pin out 
and it has a little bit of rust on it. No, 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 easy. Does this have check balls in it somewhere? They might be under that or something, probably. Okay, so this is our order. I want to take like uh, here. Yeah, put it under it. I want to no, no. I want to do like uh, photographs as we go, so that we know the direction because this is all new to me, you know. And then um, get this up so you can even see it. And then when we do that, we can set that aside. And this slides up. No, nothing. No way. Huh. I thought there was check balls located in this. Because this... Just moves up and down on that, huh? With a spring pressure. Take our spring. And that just comes up and down, huh? I gotta understand it, I guess. So that goes there, this goes there. Now we bring, we have to take that off. And that's where we need the special tool to hold this still. And so. They have a, you're supposed to put the pin back in, and then they have this square tube that goes down over it, a little square like nut, and then you hold that with a wrench, and you crack that free, and that's that's under a lot of pressure, but that's the only way that'll come off, right? Yeah. Then there's more screws down there we got to take off for the cover, so... We'll come up with something to hold that. If I put vice grips, it'll scratch us. So we'll come up with something. Turn on that segment. I don't know why. We got it loose. The easiest way for us to do it wasn't two wrenches of pipe or anything. What'd we do, Dawson? You don't have to put it in there. What'd we do? Put a pen in. Well, no, we put, it where is it? Where's the chisel? We just took a chisel and we came in on the edge where we won't hurt the top of this. Cause that has to go down tight and give it a wrap and it broke it free. So now unspin this nut. And then we're gonna take this assembly off. It's just to get to the plastic. You're rocking it. You're turning the whole thing. Put your pin in. And look at what you're doing here. And then see if you can just hold that. Is that enough? Hold the pin. Will that spin now? There you go. It's a lot like a uh, go-kart clutch. Sort of. Alright, don't get carried away. I don't know where them balls are. Are they under that? No? They're under the washer. Goes on top. Hold that. And then the nut. And then place it down in there, like that. And then we got to go set them down and we'll go and lift this up. That's there. where them balls are. And they're all in place. And it says if you go hey. fast, you're going to tear it apart. So that's got a washer. So what I want to do is I'm going to snap some photos of individual parts here and then we're going to go and lift that off and set that shield on and then this on and don't jiggle our parts and then there's a spring right here leave that on there and then we're going to go and lift that plastic up so you'll have to take the uh, other how many more is there two yep one, two, three of them. And then, is this the same size? No? No? What is this, a 20? T20? Yeah. Easy on the rocking. Don't knock the parts down. 
and then look at that we're ready now put it put our screws back in now this slides under this one okay so this has to go on first no bring your bolts up here put them right back in there put them right in there and why won't this come up there we go now you can see this thing is worn right through and that's worn that where the belt has ridden kind of a poor design and there's a lot of debris down in here Dawson but it's not it's not built up high it's just kind of weird right this uh let me bring a camera closer here what we got yeah, don't lean on the plastics to do that hold on stop these springs are ready to fly off and I don't want him knocking them off we'll put that washer on there put our bolts back in I mean, it's left there. That one went right about in there, right? I don't want you moving things with a bolt missing just in case it'll pop up, you know? And then here's our safety switch. So that's got an adjustment on it. And I think one of these here, I think it's this one. You got to measure from here to the end. It's supposed to be like two and an eighth inches or something. And, uh, I don't know what the spec is. What, how much is two that? Two and a half. Measure exact. See what you think. A lot of springs. There's two springs here, two springs there. We have the spring that hooks here. There's a lot going on here, guys. It's complicated, huh? And then this arm comes over to this. So that's our safety. Or not our safety, but our travel. We'll pull that out. And that pushes this forward. There's a lot going on. There's nothing broken, is there, D? This little pointer pin. What do you think that does? Clicks back and forth for forward reverse or something? I wonder what the object of that is. There is a little bit of debris. Um, but not enough to look like it would stop anything from moving. And this is what we were trying to move forward and back, correct? So we're trying to move this, which moves this. Uh, it's uh, Father's Day right now, so all you fathers out there, happy Father's Day. Hope you're playing with your kids today. I'm making mine work with me. But we're going to go out and get a little lunch here shortly. And we're actually taking his grandma with us. And he's already talking, he wants a steak, but we'll see what we're going to get. Tell him where we're going. Well, we think at this moment we're going where, Dawson? Golden Corral. Golden Corral, because... Dad loves that place. Yeah, I do, but we don't need that kind of food, right? They have Mexican, what else? A little bit of Italian, they got a good salad bar. But they have the sirloin steaks cooked to order. And we kind of like them, don't we, D? So I don't see anything wrong under here. This cover goes up there. What we were trying to find out is why it goes just a little in binds. So probably what we're going to end up doing is we'll get out the shop back, clean this off, and then we'll take the air hose and blow it off. And then I might try to review a video on uh, the GT transmissions and see if they have any adjustment steps we got to follow. I know this is an adjustment, but I was sort of hoping we find a bunch of debris under here stopping us um where's that screwdriver at oh you got is down under here there's quite a bit of crap i wouldn't think it's packed in there enough to stop the movement but we'll probably end up taking this off 
pulling this assembly up and giving it a good cleaning to find out what could be happening with it. I wouldn't do it with that, but um, he was pulling and pushing on the pedal and it would only go just a little, right? And it'd bind right away, correct? Mm -hmm. Right here around this pin is a bunch of crud. What is that? That's a washer, isn't it? So that's not crud. I don't see anything broken here. And so you go like that and it pulls that forward. I was just thinking that something's hitting. And like I said, the only thing I found wrong so far is the belt is worn into this cover. And when it came forward, when this part came forward, it was hitting right there, wasn't it, Dawson? And if you look flat across there, does that look like in a straight plane to you? This looks raised. Higher, which makes it actually lower. lower. So I'm wondering if, if we clip that little corner of plastic off, if it makes a difference. <coughs> what else I was wondering, <coughs> excuse me, is um, if that arm's trying to move and it catches right on that edge a little bit, is it like a mark there? Like it's hitting that and then trying to move over? If we can do away with that and just, just keep a cut. nice curve. Yeah. Take the little, cut it off. Dawson's got a nice Ryobi Dremel. Cut off tool, yeah. And he could just zip that and then we could sand it smooth. But I want to continue, but we're going to go get ready for our Father's Day brunch and see what happens. And when I get time, we'll get back to this. But I wanted Dawson to try to help me with this. And this is really a lot easier with two people. And I'm going to go on YouTube. There's a few people got videos. And a lot of them say that these transmissions mess up from being able to go because there's grass that collects up here on the bracket up up by the mower deck there's none under there very little under here what I consider very little and when I bought this it wasn't too long ago we've only mowed what three times with it that uh, I looked under here and there was no junk no grass I thought the, the machine was like brand new so it's got to be something simple so when I come up with it, we'll let you know. One more thing here before we take off is just to get it to start to move. If I do both of these, it moves pretty easy. If I go and try to go reverse now, it goes just a little bit and it starts to bind right there. But what I was going to say is, right there, now it doesn't move. See how hard that moves? But what it does is it takes this part, which is your whole back assembly, out of the system because we have this elevated. So it ha can't be anything related to the rear. It's got to be right, right here, which is what? Exactly, right? Right. This spins freely. We've already tested all this stuff out prior to taking it apart anyway. Everything moved freely. This is disconnected, so we want to concentrate on what happens right away. And this rod, we got this plastic loose tool. Get some of this stuff out of the way here. The GT part is the rear. So we should set that under there, Dawson. Hook that right under that just to keep things in reference because I may not get back to this for a few days because we got another big project going on. Um, we got, what I, see the wear on that bar right there? That's pressing down pretty hard on that bar. If I lifted that, that doesn't help. I just wanted to see if it's rubbing on something. So I think if we take this assembly up and clean under there, we might see something wrong. Wouldn't it be cool if there's a little stone pebble or something under there? And we take it out and it's done. Now it's moving good. Look at that. If I turn this whole unit, it works good. So 
I don't know if you guys do this, but a lot of times I'll take something apart and I'll stare at it and keep adjusting until I can kind of understand the, how it functions. May help me figure out what's wrong with it. But I don't see any wear on anything. Do you, Dawson? Everything's got the paint coating. Nothing's been apart. There is some, this, this uh, bolt that goes to the release. There is a little bit of wear right there on that steel. Can you see that? That, that's rubbed on that pretty hard. So I think if we disassemble and clean, we'll come up with something. Right, well, what we've decided, we gotta leave quick here, but uh, rather than leaving this exploded everywhere, worrying about parts, this is gonna help us remember how it goes together. So Dawson's gonna start off with the check balls. There's no washer under it, right? That sits right on the spring. Mm -hmm. And what happens when this spins is these balls will swing out and then it'll pinch that belt. And then this cover should go down farther, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then remember what's next? That one. And if you could just start your nut, your washer, then your nut. Push it down. Yeah, just start your nut on there. We're going to sort of just hand assemble this a little bit so that we don't lose any parts and then we'll remember. That's good. And then what's next is hold that washer or the spring and this will pinch the belt. And then I don't know what these little parts are called. I'd have to look them up. And then Put slide pin your in. pin in, which, where is it? Right there. Yeah. He's going to squeeze that down. You're crooked. Turn it. You got to turn the, there, push her down. And turn this. Let up a little so I can turn it. Push down. You keep turning. Stop turning. And then down a mile. No, I think he's got to spin the nut down for You can't compress that further. I don't know if he can. No. That's as far as I can. No, he'll have to spin the nut down farther. Hold this from turning. But see, we're learning. So guys, you out there, we don't know what we're doing, do we? Nope. Nope, we don't know nothing. And then we turn the shaft, let up, so I can turn the shaft straight. Don't let that turn, Dawson. Now press it down, let up. Got to work together here. There, now the pin will go in. All right. Whoa, where'd it go? And then I pushed it a little too hard, so what, right? We're learning, let her up, there. And now we got to put our cover on and then just start your bolts. And then these covers we can leave off. We're not too concerned with them right now. And this is a general transmission 87128. All right, so. Now we can place this in the garage, keep it out of the weather, everything's together, and we'll just set our covers on top, and we'll get back to this in a couple of days. Okay, I'm back here on this general transmission, and we were doing, let's see what we were doing the other day. We were taking the covers off to inspect them and see if there's any debris under here, and they're shooting trap across the street, a good moment for that. They got multiple covers in here, and it, it leaves an opening for debris to get in. They should have designed these better. But I don't know if you can see, there is some debris down in there. I don't know how anyone can stop it because of the design. All these plastic uh, mold injection parts are spots to hold debris. You know, there's a piece of stick, grass. So I, my guess is I should take this apart, clean it. I hate to hose it down, but I got an air hose. I don't know if it'll come off in there. 
easily. And then see if we can kind of do something to figure out how that's getting in. Maybe right through this slot and try to cover it a little better. Otherwise, it's gonna be a maintenance issue. Every time you mow some tall grass, it blows up in there, or it's super dry outside, and just the air volume underneath the deck's gonna whip it up in there. So let's continue to take this apart, or should I say take it back apart, because Dawson and I put it together. Um, I had him start some screws so parts don't come apart here. I wanted to keep them in order, but I think if we do this a couple times, we're going to remember where things go. So if I stay organized, using a cloth on this old table, this table's getting a little rough. Good enough for this. And we press this down, pull that pin out, then the cover, then the spring, and this, I just want to inspect everything, make sure there's nothing damaged. We put this nut on by hand, then there's a washer beneath it. So I do this a couple times, I should tell people, hey, bring your general transmission over. I'll fix it. Set all our parts aside. This has all them check balls and they're clean. There's no debris in there. I'll put this back together and cover it so I don't roll them somewhere. We've got our power drive belt. And this, there's a number, 37401 GT, made in Mexico. There is no grooves or damage in it. The only thing I noticed on the belt is when it's running inside there, the back side of the belt touches right here. And I did see another video on YouTube, can't remember whose it was, but it made that same little groove in it just slapping around. They should have put a vertical guard, you know, belt guard there to keep it from hammering on your plastic. But, so we got our drive belt, and then I should hook my light up here. We're actually underneath the bucket of the tractor and shine it down so I can see better. Maybe I'll do that first so you can see and I can see better. I was out in the sun, but it's really hot, so I think I'll stay in here. All right, I threw the light up overhead here, hooked on the bucket, and I can see better. See the shadows? That's a little better. And uh, whenever the sun's real bright, that's what happens. There's our release, and someone said below, below this spring, we get some grass and debris, and... You know, it's pretty much everywhere. It's not as deep as I thought it was going to be. I do see some wetness under here, like rainwater maybe, because I left a tractor outside. So it, it can't even drain off water. On another YouTube channel, there was a guy that says he uses high-pressure water and just blows it out. But my experience with a craftsman, let me show you here, is... You know, they have the deck wash system. I think the Husqvarna has it too. And that does underneath. But when I blow water up on top of the deck, look at that. That makes such a mess. It gets wet and it gets heavy. Look at this. And because you're under the tractor, you can't get in there very good. Look at how deep that is. Right now, it's not harming too much, but it's going to make these pulleys stop turning and the springs are in the junk so the reason this is in this kind of a shape with that much dirt in it is one of our customers had us mow their lawn nobody lives in that house right now and it was deep and it was just a mess here I'm shooting trap over there they must be missing I don't need that many shots um, and then You know, it's just a mess. So I'm gonna. I we went across the driveway. We're throwing up stones and dirt, and so I gotta clean that. But that's a perfect time to clean that. I think a shop vac works best because you're sucking out the dry grass and junk before you get it wet. You get it wet and it's caked on. 
And so I think the guy that suggested to use high pressure water is not a good idea. I wouldn't want all the water down in here because these pockets, put my finger down in here, I'm touching the bottom of the pocket. You know, it's an inch deep on some of these. Looks like it's at least an inch deep. So where's the water going to go? It's going to stay there. It's going to start rusting things. All these springs have paint on them. Nothing here looks like it's ever been apart. So now, here's a release that pushes that forward. I think I'm just going to blow this out. I'll probably make a mess. I should move my parts or cover them. Maybe I'll cover them with another cloth and get my parts box out of the way. And we've taken this apart twice now, so maybe I'll put them in the parts bucket because we should be able to remember by now. But it's so easy to lose one part. And then you're like, oh no, I gotta order that. Let's get this right out of the way. And then I'll take the air nozzle and clean that out. If you can hear that, that's 50 cents or a buck, whatever you're loading your own. I see a lot of dollar signs. I'd rather just go hunting. So let's try this and I'll see how much we got. I got an air nozzle. See all this junk down in here? See, it goes away. So, I mean, if you keep it dry and use an air nozzle, it would make more sense. I don't think the vacuum cleaner would loosen this up. Look at that. That's water. So, you wouldn't want water down in there. It'll stay there and it'll collect more dirt, you know? I'm going to be a mess here in a minute. Definitely a poor design. Get my ratchet out of there. And then I'm just going to keep going and clean this, and I'll show you the turn in this. Here's our other cover. I left it on there, one screw. But, um,. Underneath any kind of moving parts, I just want to make sure there's no debris under it. And then this is where your rod hooks on. And we got forward and reverse. And it doesn't move easy. I know when we press the pedal, it just, just when you touch it, it's like it's sticking. So that's where I'm going with this. I'll put it on time lapse and when I get it clean enough, I'll show you. Okay, we got that all cleaned out. I got stuff all over me. My glasses, my face. What we got, I could not find anything wrong with this. Um, there's no wear on anything. There's no grooves. The only thing, like I said in the beginning, was the belt slaps on the side of this a little bit. And it's made a groove cut in that, which that's a shield. The belt looks new. All the parts look new. I don't see wear on them. These pulleys, a little bit of belt wear on the outside edge. I don't see any reason to even sand them or do anything to them. There's no sharp edges to bind. So I would say 
what would I say? I would say put it back together. I think there's an adjustment on the length of this. I forget the number if it's two and an eighth or two and three quarters. But I don't I don't see anything wrong. And so let's reassemble if I can remember the order. It shouldn't be that hard to pop back apart and change something, but all the springs are on. Every little part's got a piece of paint on it. So it's like a factory. Um you know, it's done at the factory like that. Nothing's rubbing. So your guess is as good as mine. I was really hoping to find something that was defective. Hey, we got the tiger out here. But I got to get this back together. We got to mow the lawn. Um, I'm hoping this is no parts then. I don't see anything broken. I did see a couple videos where these parts here break and wear and... The only thing, actually, the only thing I did notice is this bottom bearing makes a little noise. But it's probably because they don't grease them. There's no play in it. And the bearing up here is quiet. This one sits in this pocket, so it might have got water in it. I might be like 65 Ford and go ahead and his channel there, he said you can pop this cover off and put a little grease in there. Just careful not to damage that seal. Maybe I'll attempt that because this will mount down in there. Water would run downhill and set in that pocket a little bit. Hi, Tiger. But you can make a little noise. Probably the brand new one makes the same noise because they're, you know, cheap Chinese stuff. I don't know. There's no part number on them or nothing, but I probably could get a bearing for like four bucks. But I don't think that's the issue because it turns. It's not, no marks on it, no nothing. I'll probably put on time lapse. I'll go ahead and reassemble everything. I might take a couple things apart again because I got to remember the order. Okay, well, I learned a little bit how it goes together. I set the uh, pulleys on to test it. I don't see anything broken, anything worn, anything wrong with it. This freewheels, nothing's binding, all the springs are on. The adjustments have paint on them. I can't imagine somebody moving them. Um, everything works. Uh, there was some grass debris down in there, and part of this cover was broken from the belt. And I remember where this goes now. But part of it covers this opening. And it goes in like this. And I think if they had a one-piece cover, like even here, and then instead of this being so small, have it so you just pull in the belt off and you can pull the cover up rather than pulling all these apart. Um, and then just making a solid cover would keep the crap out of it. So... And then the belt rides through there and it touches the plastic. They should have had a little metal guard to keep the belt straight on one side. Other than that, I don't see anything wrong with it. So I got to put this little piece of cover on because it's broke, but there was like no material there. And I'm going to put it back in the machine. And we're going to call this uh, video to an end, I guess. I want to put it in the machine, and then I'll let's see how this thing goes. Should snap under and go under, yeah. So it just has a crack in that. That shouldn't affect anything. And then once you put the bolt in, it goes through both of them. And I'll 
I'll fire the machine up and head outside with it and this what this washer doesn't go on that screw that's for sure because that already has a built-in washer on it so we got one screw out of place anybody got a screw loose the reason I thought it went there is it's holding down those two springs but it goes up here because there's a little pocket for it right here so that's not a big deal right so ratchet works good they don't have a lot of torque you're not going to hurt anything i'm sure these have a spec torque but the plastic screws as they call them i don't think it matters don't overdo it when it's down it's down they're not going to back out because they're in plastic so i want to put her together We'll put it back up in the machine, zip this all together, and uh, throw the tires on it, go out and mow a little bit, and see if it is better, see if it's worse, see if it's the same. Um, I'll get the belt number off that right now, that 37401 GT, made in Mexico, and the part number, and I'll have them for my records. And um, we'll reassemble this. There's no parts left in here related to this, so we're in good shape. Um, I did put some red grease, some uh, GM Chrysler European Japanese grease, red grease, in that one bottom bearing. But, you know, I don't think that was necessary. But this thing spins more than this one does. This spins off from the belt of the engine. So other than that, that's the only thing I saw is that one bearing was a little bit noisy. No, nothing else. All right. Garage is a little crowded here, but I brought it back in. We've got to set it up on the block and just reverse order here. And I've got to start our three wheel device in because it's got to be on such an angle it's probably easier to leave it in right now and i'm going to sit it up on our block of wood and jack it up into place i think if i can get it in there it was easier with dawson's help for sure but we should be able to manage this and uh this thing hooked on me, is it? Oh, that's what it is. Get this back here. Hooked on my shirt. Help. And then we've got the electric that we got to hook up before we get it up too high. This safety switch. And then we've got the belt and the rod. We got to get them in orientation here. And, like I said, this thing, we've got to kind of get it up through that hole. And, I see it better out here. Yeah, she's got to go up quite a ways yet. So, I think I'll check this electric wire. And that'll reach right now. That's snapped on. Our rod is on top of the transmission, which is right. And our belt, I'll go on the other side of this. And the brake pedal, clutch pedal's up. We can probably put that on last, but just get it in position. And then we can lower our jack down, which will raise the transmission up. Just make sure you don't bind on anything. I don't know if our jack's big enough. It's a 20 ton. Probably could use a bigger jack. And then pick this up somewhere in the low pay. Yeah, I think the transmission's about 30 pounds. Dawson said it's, I asked him how heavy, he goes about 30. I don't know how many bales of hay he's lifted, but 
I think a bale of hay is a little heavier. There it is. We want to come up through that hole. We don't want it binding. And we want to miss the bracket on the other side. And sometimes I wish car transmissions and things were this easy and light, you know. It's just about out through there. We'll go down some more. All right, feels like it's hitting. Probably on the bracket over here. We left this bracket on. Yep. And that's got to go like that. We lost our three wheel rod here. Hang on to that. Down some more. And our bracket hooks up at the front, so it's got to come backwards. About like that. Belts out of the way, and then the uh, shift linkage is clear. Down some more. Looking good. Make sure our belt will come through there, and that will. And our rod is clear. Yep. Now what we can do, start some bolts in it, right? Should be able to get these long ones in there. I think the bolt went up through, correct? Not the opposite direction. These are shouldered. Get these started. I sure hope this helps something because Dawson was excited when I said it's a pedal drive. And I was really hoping that we were going to keep it, you know, and the Craftsman is a hand drive. You use your arm on the side, and if you're turning or something, you're trying to change speed, you got to let go of the wheel. It's a little bit annoying at times. And there's another thing they should all change is all the baggers come out the right-hand side. How come they don't put the cup holder on the left side? Because it fills my drink up with grass every time. They got to think of everything when they build something everything not just convenience but smart you know our shift rod is good our belt's good this rod is good now we got to go down another inch and that'll bring the front end up just about there and then we got one bracket we left in and these bolts are silver color. I don't know why these are brass and these are silver. We'll put that on. Look like the same length. I'll put the one on the other side and we gotta do a bracket over here. And then we can, I think we can tighten things up. Let me, Confirm our belt is free. That's good. The rod, the speed control. That's good. And then, I don't know if you can see anything, but over here, I tighten that up to get this out of the way to do our electric wire. So we just let that drop down, put our bolt up through, and slide your bracket over. And the transmission's a little high, so we gotta jack it up a bit.
20 tons go awful slow. And then, there we go. Put a bolt up through it. And then, I don't know if there's, there's a slight bit of play in it. They probably do that because of their machining. But I'll probably tighten this bracket screw up first on the side. And then, there's room enough. Tighten this up. We need a half inch wrench to hold the top. I'll get in there with it. And then we'll just go all the way around. See why I like ratchets and things? Pretty fast. Check our pre. Is it pre? Yeah. And then we'll do this side. So if I knew what I was doing on this, by doing a couple of them, I probably could repair them for people. But everything's a learner. Plastic transmission. And then that's six attachment bolts. And then Up top here, we gotta go down in this hole, and I gotta put this shift rod on, and that just slides right there. That's it. And then our belt comes through this retainer, and it's about an inch and a half short, so I gotta press the pedal down. Now I gotta put that little little clip on and then our belt is on. I'm thinking of everything else. So uh, we got our battery cable. It's gotta go up through the battery box. We still have the battery box on. Hook our battery up and we're gonna go test it. Prior to doing any of that, I'm just gonna push this pedal forward and back just to see. Oh, I'm doing it by hand. Well, that would be cool if it fixed it. So everything's functioning. I'm going to put that clip on now. And then see what's left in our parts bucket here. There are our tire parts. Oh, we've got another spring to put on. And that goes on the side here. This large spring. And let me look here, there's a washer, yep, and a cotter key. And then we've got our two clips for the tires, the two washers, and our battery connection. So we're like near the end here. All right, I put that return spring for your clutch pedal, brake pedal, and the little cotter key in it. Now we'll put our tires on, and we got one, two, three, four washers. So probably the filthy one goes in. Then your tire. And then the keyway. What I like to do is put the keyway up. Makes life easier. And then Line your wheel up. Anything to make life easier, you know. Line your wheel up. A little dark in here, but keep your keyway up. Put your key in. Should slide in with your finger. Then put your shinier washer on. And then your little I don't know if they call it a sir clip, little C clip, and then 
Sometimes you can do it by hand. That big washer's in the way. So sometimes a screwdriver, sometimes a hammer. Just anything will slide them on there. And then, where's the hammer? I didn't bring it in here, but if I put this up there and just give it a love tap, she usually pops on there. But that washer behind it doesn't allow your fingers in there. And not quite. I got a, a job coming up that I'd like to see if we can video. Some homeowners allow you, some don't, but it's a large bathroom remodel. I don't like to do bathroom and kitchens in the warm months, but as we get older and we lose our hair, I don't like to be out in the sun too much. And it's like roofing weather, but if I don't have any on the books, then i got to do something else. And we've got a tree job coming up that we're still waiting parts for for the New Holland. We're having a real hard time getting a... See that? I just can't get that on there. Um, getting a proper water pump for it. You tell them it's a seven hole and they send you a five hole. I'm on my third pump today. Says it's going to be delivered by 9 o'clock. Coming from, you know, ten buck two somewhere. Um, the dealer didn't have one in stock. A new one. He had a rebuilt one. And it was a little bit over double the price of Amazon, which is a rebuilt one. And... I believe it said a one-year warranty, and the dealer said no warranty on a rebuild. I'm like, how can you sell something with no warranty? He had that in stock. I could have drove up and got it, but I can't see spending two, I don't know if it was 89 almost 300 bucks for it. And the new one was 300 and I can't remember the number now. I wrote it down, but like three 350 bucks plus tax, and then... Still got to wait for it. So, I'm going to try the Amazon, see if they do it correctly. These aren't popping on. I'll put it on time lapse. I'm going to finish up the wheels. We're going to put the battery box down in there, hook the battery up. Okay, let's put it to the test. What I'm gonna do is just go down and back, make a couple passes. Uh, might as well run the mower instead of just waste fuel. And I wanna test the forward pedal before. When you pressed it, it would get like locked. You press it again, it'll kinda of break. Right now, it's moving. So let's see if it's working. Maybe it was just debris under there. So I'll fire it up, fire it up, fire it up, Terrell, and we'll test it out. I'll mow on a number four because we're getting towards the summer here. <laughs>
get Dawson to test it out. I don't think he put the mower deck down. I told him number four. That's all right. We're testing the drive, not the mower right now. He's doing a project of his own. I think it's a secret YouTube video. See, he's testing the forward and the back. Before it would lock, and he says, you know, this isn't right, Dad. Lower your deck down to number four. And then test your forward and backward. It works. Yeah, I thought so, too. It's a whole lot better. And then just uh, do a little forward and back and show them how the pedal works free now. It doesn't bind, does it? And I just came up the steep hill, so everything seemed to work. Maybe it was just debris under the deck, and that would be great. No parts needed. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next video, guys. Remember to like and subscribe.